all right what is up guys it is storm back here with another video and in this one i'm bringing you part 38 to the golden fox and naruto story so if you're wondering where videos have been for the past few days it's because i'm working on a massive video and it's probably going to be out by the end of this week or at the very latest next week now the video itself is going to be about re-zero so if you're a fan of that series be on the lookout for that but before we begin i just want to say be sure to go subscribe to my other channels the links to those will be down in the description below. Also, go follow me on Twitter and my new channel Instagram. The links to those will be both down in the description below. And without further ado, let's just jump right on in. Konoha Stadium Remains All who remained at the stadium watched closely. Senzuru, whose ember-colored eyes gazed intensely at Aisu, and was preparing to end this battle once and for all. He had perfected the jutsu, so that there was no way Aisu would survive this time. The same could be said for himself. Angel of Death, an S-ring jutsu stored in the Forbidden Scroll. Those who know of the technique didn't bother to learn it. The sacrifice was not worth it. The creator of such a jutsu did think it was worth it, hence the reason why he created the jutsu in the first place. Flashback, 19 years ago. Summer mornings in Konoha were always beautiful, especially when you were with the person you loved. Senzuru and Kurnai were walking down the streets holding hands. They were heading to their meeting spot where Asuma would be waiting. They actually had a mission today in Grass Country. With the war going on with Rock Country, missions were constant. I hope we get a good mission and run into some enemy shinobi. I've been dying to fight, a younger Senzuru said with excitement. Senzai, you shouldn't be anxious to do battle. Remember, it is a war going on, and the possibility that one of us won't return is extremely high, Kurnai pointed out. Kurnai, we're the strongest squad. Well, Kakashi's squad is pretty good. Really though, I hate that guy. He's arrogant and he gets all the cool missions. Obito is lucky. I wish we could have been a part of Minato Sensei team's mission to grass. How long have they been gone anyway? It's been close to a week now. They should be returning any day now. Both Kurnai and Senjuru looked up to see Asuma sitting in a tree chewing on a stick. Hey Asuma, where is Shikaku Sensei? Senjuru asked, shrugging shoulders. I don't know, but I was informed by the third Okage to inform you guys that we have to report to the Okage Tower in another hour. For now, our mission has been suspended. Senjuru frowned at the last part. Great, now we're stuck here in the village with nothing to do. I swear, Obito is lucky. Jumping down from the tree, Asuma landed next to his teammates. Well, we should get going. You guys ready? Both nodded, and the squad headed off towards the Okage Tower. Okage Tower, 15 minutes later. Team Shikaku arrived at the Okage Tower to see the third Okage sitting behind his desk with tons of paperwork in front of him. While writing on a piece of document, he addressed the squad. You guys are a little early, but I guess it's better than being late. Senjuru was the first to speak. Lord Okage, why have you summoned us here? The third Okage stood up and walked over to the window. All missions have been suspended until next week. Kurnai was curious. Why, Lord Okage? The third Okage turned to the group with a sad expression. Many of our shinobi were lost during this last mission to grass. We will take a week to mourn the losses that we have incurred during this time. If it wasn't for Konoha's yellow flash, I fear that we would have lost far more shinobi. So, you mean Minato Sensei's team is okay? That's a relief, Senju said with a sense of happiness. That's why I called your team here. I informed Shibi's team not too long ago. Team Minato has suffered a tremendous loss just a few days ago. We received word yesterday from a carrier hawk. The third Okage informed the group. Don't tell me Kakashi was killed. Asuma stated, knowing how respected and gifted Kakashi was. Out of everyone, he was thought to be the one to become the fifth Hokage. He stared into his son's eyes and said, No, it wasn't Kakashi who was lost. It was Obito Uchiha. Team Shikaku's eyes widened in surprise. How? Senjuru asked still in shock. He died protecting a comrade. A worthy death of a leaf shinobi. Listen, Team Minato will be back later on today. I'm sure everyone on their team is not taking this well. So if you could, please try to be understanding. Listening to what his father said, Asuma knew that Team Minato would definitely be changed upon their return. He was sad by the fact that Obito was KIA, but he knew that it was the life of a shinobi. I just wanted to make sure you were aware of the situation. You all are free to go. 
Saratobi sat back down in his chair and watched as the group slowly exited his office. Upon leaving his office, Orochimaru and his newest apprentice, the 11-year-old Anko Mitarashi, were heading towards the third Okage's office while the group exited, smiling at Senzuru. So I see you heard the news, a pity about what happened. Orochimaru, you heard about Obito as well, Senzuru asked the man. Yes, but that isn't the only thing I've heard. It seems that Kakashi benefited from the Uchiha kid's death. Honestly, I don't know why you kids are so eager to fight, when all that is waiting for you is the Konoha Cemetery. That Obito kid was always out to prove himself. Looking back on it, he reminded me of your uncle. Another fo Another what? Orochimaru turned his head when he saw Tsunade glaring at him from behind. My apologies, Tsunade. I was just telling your son that he shouldn't be eager to go into combat. I would hate for his fate to be as tragic as the Uchiha kid. Or your little brother's. Orochimaru's mouth formed a slight smirk. Tsunade's fist clenched, but she felt the familiar hand in her shoulder. Orochimaru, knock it off. The old man called us here for a reason. So let's go see and what he wants from us exactly. Orochimaru along with Anko, Shinade, and Jiraiya headed towards the Hokage's office. Orochimaru turned around and looked at Team Shikaku. You kids would do well not to rush to your death like your little friend did. Also, Senzuru, you may be the holder of the Phoenix contract, but that doesn't mean you're invincible. The snake Sonin glanced at Anko, who knew that was his way of telling her to wait outside. When the Sonin entered the room, Anko looked at Senzuru. Why don't you like Lord Orochimaru? That guy always has something negative to say. He walks around like he's better than everyone. I don't see why everyone is scared of that guy, Senzuru stated. He's the strongest of the Sanin, and he's next in line to be Okage. It is only natural for people to fear and respect Lord Orochimaru, Anko said in her teacher's defense. Strongest Sanin? Are you brain dead? My mother is the strongest of the Sanin. Anyway, it doesn't matter who's stronger. He shouldn't walk around thinking he's better than everyone. I wonder what he'll do when I surpass him. Senzuru's comments made Anko mad. You will never surpass Lord Orochimaru. He's the strongest shinobi in the village. The frown on her face illustrated her anger. Actually, Minato-sensei is the strongest shinobi in the leaf. I wouldn't be surprised if he's a candidate to be Okage, Asuma pointed out. Kern I knew that Senzuru was too stubborn to back down, so she decided that enough was enough. Let's go, you guys. We should find Shizune, Gunma, and Reido. Senzuru nodded and walked away, leaving Anko behind. He wanted to say something, but his first concern was to Obito's family. He wanted to give his condolences. Even though Obito wasn't his best friend, he was one of his good friends. Turning to Kurenai and Asuma, I'll meet up with you guys later. I have something that I need to do. The two nodded, understanding. Leaving the group, Senzuru headed towards the Uchiha district. Uchiha district, 20 minutes later. The young Chunin, the only one in the village to have a black vest, slowly approached the Uchiha district. The Uchiha clan was the most feared clan in the world. In a one-on-one -on -one battle, it was almost impossible to defeat an Uchiha. Senzuru, however, had a great advantage. His mother was a Sanin, whose ability lied in medical ninjutsu and taijutsu. With her knowledge and training, she made him aware of everything that the Sharingan was capable of, and how to combat the dojutsu. Even though he knew all of this, he still knew that doing battle with an Uchiha was not recommended. The reason he liked Obito was because he wasn't like your typical Uchiha, arrogant and overconfident. Obito was different in that aspect. He knew that coming to this district, much like the Hyuga district, he was bound to get into a confrontation for two reasons. One, because he was the son of a Sanin, and two, he was the wielder of the legendary Phoenix contract. He was always confronted by either a Hyuga or an Uchiha, but he avoided battle usually because of Kurenai. While walking into the district, he was stopped immediately by two Uchiha clan members. He recognized the two. They were the ones he would have words with from time to time. The 12-year-old Tekka and the 16-year-old Inabi were two Uchiha's that he really hated. Especially Inabi. Inabi, who was a Jonin, spoke. What are you doing here? Look, I don't want any trouble. I just wish to pass so I can see Obito's parents. Senju informed the two. So you heard that Weakling was killed. Loser, and even in death, he had no honor. I tell you, given that Kakashi Hatake the Sharingan was the ultimate disgrace to our clan, Tekka said with disgust. What? You mean Kakashi has a Sharingan? 
I didn't even think that was possible. Obviously it is, doesn't matter though. Kakashi's a loser, can't believe he's a Jonin as well. You wanna go past, you say? Go home to your mother, loser, Inabi stated. Senjuru clenched his fist. Instead of acting on his anger and beating Inabi senseless, he decided to just turn around and walk away. I'll stop by a little later. Inabi smiled with satisfaction. Next time you step on a Chia soil, I'm gonna kick your ass. Senjuru didn't mind him, he just ignored that guy completely. While walking down the path that led to and from the Uchiha complex, he ran into Makoto Uchiha and a four-year-old Itachi, who were carrying a bunch of flowers, stopping to say hello. Makoto and Itachi, how are you two? We could be better, but as you know, we suffered a loss to one of our members. Obito's parents are not taking it very well, Makoto informed Senjuru. Mom, even though Obito did lose his life, he died in an honorable way. Not only did he do what he had to do to complete his mission, and he also saved a comrade, Itachi stated. Patting her son's head, she smiled at her child. I'm glad that you see it that way. Most don't. The majority of our clansmen believe that he was disgraced to the clan by giving Kakashi a Sharingan. Well, if Obito gave Kakashi his eye, then he had his reason, and his decision should be respected. Well, Makoto, could you give Obito's parents my regards? You take care of yourself, Makoto. You too, Itachi. The younger Uchiha bowed, and Makoto waved as Enzo left them. Four hours later, on the roof of his house, Senjuru was looking at the sky. Obito's death did affect him more than he thought it would have. I've never lost anyone important to me. Well, father, but I barely remember him. Mom lost her parents, father, and her brother to the war. Sitting by yourself, I'm shocked that Kern isn't with you. Turning his head, he saw his mother smiling at him. What's going on, Senjuru? Turning back to look at the sky. Nothing, mom. Tsunade knew her son better than anyone. She walked up to him and took a seat. Hmm, nothing the matter, you say. Spill it, kid. Turning to his mother, he asked, Mom, when you lost your parents, father, and your brother, how did you deal with it? Tsunade wasn't expecting this question. In fact, she never wanted to talk about the pain she felt when losing her dear people. But since the person she cared for the most was the one asking, she had to answer. Well, when my parents died in the war, it hurt me really bad, and that was when I decided to become a medic. Your uncle and I were alone, but Sarutobi Sensei didn't look after us. For a long time, it was just me and Nawaki, during which time, I studied medicine, and being a member of the Sanin, well, we weren't called such at the time, I had to learn how to fight. When you have a genius like Orochimaru on your team, you have to up your skill set. Really? Orochimaru's that good? Sensei asked. Well, he's a well-rounded shinobi. A force to be reckoned with. Even though he gets under my skin, he's someone you want on your side in the heat of battle. Anyway, I worked on taijutsu and medical jutsus. As the years went along, Nawaki became a genin, and during which time, I became known to all as one of the legendary sanin, Sanade explained. Sanin. I remember that story. The legendary salander Hanzo defeated you guys and gave you the name. He's said to be one of the strongest shinobi during that war. But I'm gonna beat him one day, and be even more renowned than you, mom. Senjuru flinched when Tsunade grabbed both of his shoulders. Listen, don't you think about seeking him or any S-class level shinobi out to prove your strength. You're all that I have, and if I lose you, just don't go looking to prove yourself. You're already strong, Senjuru, not to mention you're the wielder of the Phoenix contract. Your time will come, son. Just don't go rushing into things, that's how I lost your uncle. Senjuru saw the pain in his mother's eyes. So, that's what happens when you lose someone you care for. Everything you have becomes that more precious. He hugged his mother. You don't have to worry. I promise I won't do anything stupid. But what you said to me goes for you as well. Big sister Shizune, Asma, Kurna, and you are dear to me. If I lost any one of you, I don't know what I'd do. Well, your uncle and father are why I'm known as the medical specialist. You see, son, when you lose something dear to you, it forces you to look at things that will ensure that you can be effective so it won't happen again. Nawaki forced me to focus on becoming a medical specialist, and your father forced me to create techniques that would place a severely wounded shinobi into a comatose state until further medical care could be provided. I know what you're thinking. You want to make sure what happened to Obito doesn't happen to anyone you care about, right? 
Yeah, but I wouldn't know what type of jutsu I could create. I mean, if someone's injured, we have a medic to take care of that. Each unit is assigned a medic ninja. Besides, I'm a fighter. Medical jutsus aren't my forte. Looks like I'll have to create a jutsu that will ensure the safety of my teammates. Sender stood up and looked at Tsunade. Thanks, Mom. You always help me see things better. What are mothers for? Now get out of here and don't forget to visit Kakashi at the hospital. Is Kakashi okay? The young shinobi asked. Yes, we just want to keep him overnight and examine his eye. When I left, Rin, Kurenai, Guy, Shizune, and Asuma were all there. Well, I'll be back later, Mom. See ya. Senju jumped from the rooftop and landed on the ground. The moment he landed, he was off and running towards the hospital. Konoha Hospital. Arriving at the hospital about 25 minutes later, Senju walked into Kakashi's room. To find the young Jonin sitting up in his bed looking at a familiar pair of goggles in his hand. What do you want, Senzuru? Kakashi asked without even looking up. I just came to see how you were doing, Kakashi. Your eye? Obito's eye, Kakashi said correcting him. It's covered. It was not meant to be in my body. From the little I understand, he did give it to you, correct? Senzuru asked. You shouldn't have. I don't deserve it. Due to my inadequacy as leader, Obito is dead. I just wish that, what, you could have saved him? Kakashi and Zendru turned at the door to see Minato standing at the doorway. You're too hard on yourself, Kakashi. Teammates work together to achieve a goal and fight for one another, but friends die for each other. Obito's sacrifice was his way of showing you that he valued your life as much as he valued his own. He was the true shinobi, and his eye was not only a gift, but to let you know that he'll always be watching out for you. You can keep bidding yourself up, Kakashi. But in the end, Obito isn't coming back. Make good of the gift he has given you, and ensure that his legacy lives on. Minato's words touched both Senzuru and Kakashi. Turning to Senzuru. Senzuru, let's leave Kakashi. Senzuru turned back to see Kakashi as he walked away, only to see tears hitting the white sheets that were pulled over his thigh. While leaving Kakashi and heading through the doorway, Minato addressed the tuning. Senzuru, I know you want to ask Kakashi about what happened, but I don't think he's ready. I don't even think Rin wants to talk about it. They lost someone close. I think what hurts them more is that they couldn't do anything to prevent it. Yeah, I don't know what I'd do if I lost a teammate without being able to do anything. Which is why I plan to create a jutsu that will allow me to protect everyone, Senju proclaimed. Minato laughed. I'm sure you will, but even then, Minato looked off into the distance. Sometimes fate doesn't allow you to do anything when you have the power. What do you mean, Sensei? The teen asked. I mean that I created the Horizon with the intent on saving a comrade, as long as the mark was within range of them. Even with this jutsu, many shinobi died, even Obito. Even if your technique has the power to save everyone, it doesn't necessarily mean that it will. In any case, I have to get going. My wife will be mad if I'm not home for dinner. Later, Senzuru. And remember what I said. Disappearing in a yellow flash, Senzuru narrowed his eyes. Show off. But he did take heed to what Minato said. I'm sorry, Minato Sensei, but I will create a jutsu that will save everyone. No matter what. Senzuru had an idea in mind, but research was required. He headed to the library. End of flashback. Senzuru watched as Aizu struggled, knowing that his mother, his girlfriend, and his unborn child, and the rest of Konoha needed to be protected. His thoughts took over his mind. Flashback. Eight months later. Nighttime in Konoha was always peaceful. There were few people walking the streets and usually no one at the training grounds, which was perfect for Senjuru, who had been using the training grounds for the last four months to put his technique to use. This jutsu. It's complete. After spending seven months studying the ceiling and implementing the jutsu, I was able to create Angel of Death. I have to show mom my jutsu. Senjuru, who was happy that he finally completed his technique, ran home. He needed to show his mother what he came up with. He knew that she would be proud. Running and jumping from rooftop to rooftop, he found himself at his house. Running through the house, the young boy yelled, Mom, Mom, where are you? Tsunade, Jiraiya, Orochimaru, Minato, and Shizune both walked into the living room to see what all the commotion was about. Senzai, what's the matter? I did it, Mom. Minato Sensei, I created a jutsu that will protect everyone. I want to show you what I mean. Come with me to the backyard. Senzuru ran out to the backyard. This caused everyone to follow. 
Standing before everyone, his eyes focused on Tsunade. Mom, watch. I'm going to use this log as a demonstration. Orochimaru spoke. What do you plan on showing us that will protect everyone? Just watch. You'll see what I mean. Doing the necessary hand seals, Senzuru finished with the tiger seal. When he finished, his body started to glow white. This caused everyone to watch the boy closely. Looking at the log, everyone noticed a black kanji form in the log that read death. It didn't take long for a blinding white light to erupt from both Senzuru and the log, causing everyone to shield their eyes. After a few seconds, when the light died down, Senzuru was clutching his knees while panting. See, Mom, I did it. Minato turned to Tsunade. Tsunade, nodding, already aware of what he was going to say. I know, Minato. I know. Orochimaru laughed. Seems like your son doesn't even realize the consequences of such a jutsu. It is indeed a superior jutsu, but it isn't without its cost. I'm leaving. I have an important mission in the morning. If that boy keeps going the route he's going, you're going to lose another person dear to you, Tsunade. Orochimaru disappeared, leaving behind purple flames. Jiraiya shook his head. That Orochimaru. Senjuru was confused. He wanted to know why everyone was looking at him the way they were, as if he did something wrong. Mom, wasn't that a great jutsu? Tsunade's only reply was, Don't ever use that jutsu, ever. Minato, as Hokage, you know what you'll have to do, right? The fourth Hokage nodded. Yes, I'll have to place it in the Forbidden Scroll, under S-Class Jutsu. Senjuru, I'm instructing you not to use that jutsu. Senjuru yelled, But it's my ultimate jutsu, and it's... A sacrifice jutsu, Minato pointed out. What? Senjuru asked, wondering how it could be so. Jiraiya explained, Look kid, that jutsu is a sealing jutsu, by which you lock into a person's chakra and form the necessary seals that generates the seal in their body. But to do that, you had to find a way to summon the seal and that requires your blood. A portion of your energy is placed into the seal, which acts as a bomb that the user cannot escape, since it is attached to them. That is the simple way of putting it. However, Trees and rocks are good to practice on since they don't require as much energy. With a human, you would have to sacrifice your life force. Equivalent exchange, if you will. But I did spot something, though. It doesn't matter if it's one person or a hundred. If you use that jutsu on the intended targets, no one will survive. I guess you did succeed. But you have to ask yourself one question. Are you willing to sacrifice your life for your friends? Senjuru looked at the ground. His thoughts went to what Jiraiya said. My life for my friends. If I can protect them with my power, then I don't care. He looked at Jiraiya. My friends would do it for me, so it should go without saying. Of course I would. Tsunade walked up to the boy and grabbed him by his shoulders. I don't care how you feel. Don't ever use that jutsu as long as I'm living. Promise me you won't use it. He turned away from his mother, who shook him vigorously. I said, promise me you won't use it ever, Senzuru. He turned to his mother with a serious expression. Okay. Tsunade was content. She let the boy go. I have a mission tomorrow with Orochimaru and Jiraiya. I won't be back for a few weeks. But like I said, don't do anything stupid, Senzuru. I won't, mom. He assured his mother. Good. Well, I'm getting tired. Guess that's my cue, Minato. You ready? Sure, Jiraiya sensei. Let's go. The two waved goodbye to everyone as they left. Tsunade walked them back towards the house leaving Shizune and Senjuro alone. When the two were alone, Shizune glanced over to her cousin. You have no intentions on listening to Lady Tsunade, do you? He left the girl standing by herself as he headed into the house. I won't use the technique unless I absolutely have to. End of flashback. Watching Aisu closely, Senjuro watched as the seal started to slowly form in the center of the Raikage's chest. It's gonna take a while, but this will end it all. I'll protect everyone this time. Tsunade watched as her son planned to sacrifice his life. She needed to do something. But with how much chakra she had and knowing the consequences of stepping outside of the seal, she had no choice but to watch. Why didn't she learn the technique is what she asked herself. She knew the premises behind the jutsu, but she never took the time to assimilate it into a repertoire of jutsus. Yugao didn't want to be left again. It took her a long time to get over a Hayate. This would take her even longer, if at all. In the short time that he came into her life, he opened her up. He gave her a feeling she hadn't felt in a long time. He gave her happiness. 
Yugao looked at the ground as she hugged herself. Her eyes started to water as she started to think about Senju dying on her. She looked up and yelled out, Please, don't leave me. I, we, need you. With his back turned, he smiled. I'm sorry, but this is the only way. Yugao continued to cry along with Tsunade. Yokana couldn't help but stare at the man with respect. A true hero indeed. Kakashi was thinking the same thing. He pulled down the left side of his headband over his Sharingan with a grim look. Senjuru, you are truly a leaf shinobi. Senjuru knew that the time was getting close to finishing the jutsu. This brought his mind back to the first time he had used it in battle. Flashback. Four months later. Four months had passed. Senjuru and his squad were standing before the 4th Hokage waiting to be assigned their mission. Team Shikaku, you will be heading to the border of lightning. Genma and Shizune will be placed in your squad for support. You will be taking the contents of this box to Shosei Castle. This is an S-Class mission. Normally, I would send my elite Anbu team, but everyone is scattered throughout. What about Kakashi? Wouldn't he be a good addition to our squad? Senjuru asked. Yes, but unfortunately he's in reign with Rin and Guy on a reconnaissance mission. The living legend informed them. Then why not send the Sanin? Kurnai asked. Again, I would, but it's just not possible. Jirai is doing a special mission for me. Orochimaru and Anka are on a mission in Rock. And Tsunade is in Suna with Saratopi, acting as goodwill ambassadors. I'm sending you guys because I trust in your abilities. Even though your group is composed of five Junin and one Jonin, most of you are on Jonin level. You will all do your best, I'm certain. Of course we will. Team Shikaku will get the job done. Besides, Shizune is the best healer next to Mom and Genma is a good shinobi. No way we don't succeed. Glad to hear your enthusiasm. Well, your mission begins now. I'll be heading out with you guys. But then, I'll go west once we reach Konoha borders. The 4th Hokage informed the group. Why, Lord Hokage? Shizune questioned. His serious expression replaced a happy one. There's a threat that will be coming Konoha's way. I'm heading to a friend's location to see if I can avert this danger. Senjuru wondered what danger he was talking about. What do you mean? It's top secret for now. But you'll all be made aware soon enough. Don't worry about it. You guys have a mission. Meet me at the gate and we'll head out together. The fourth Hokage said to the group, who left his office to head to the gate. Konoha Gate. Everyone was waiting at the gate for the fourth Hokage. After a few minutes of waiting, he finally showed up decked out in his Jonin outfit, with the white robe and the flames at the bottom, looking at everyone. You guys go ahead. I need to talk to Zentra for a minute. The group nodded, then took off. Looking into the cerulean eyes of the Hokage. Yes, Minato sensei I need to talk to you a matter that will possibly be a threat to the village. Only a few people are aware of this. But... The QB was spotted a few weeks ago destroying a village in the land south of Tea Country. The well, last time the QB was summoned to this plane, it was done by Madara Uchiha. As you know, the Uchiha's are loyal to Konoha, but I feel that if the QB is indeed back on this plane, they are somewhat responsible. He did fight your great grandfather at the Valley of the End in hopes of ruling Konoha. For a long time now, they've been acting distant toward the village, and I wouldn't be surprised if they're planning a coup, the fourth informed him. Why would they do that, and why are you telling me this, Lord Okage? Well, I'm heading to Naya's location to see if we can form a seal. The reason I'm telling you is because we have two people here in Konoha, who have access to the tools to combat this evil. You and Orochimaru. Do you know why you and Orochimaru are hated by many of the Uchiyas? They understand what those two contracts signify. I thought they didn't like Orochimaru because he was creepy, and he seems to hate everyone, Sendru said. Well, there are other reasons why they're not too fond of him, but that's a story for a different day. But the fact is, I don't think Orochimaru will aid during our crisis. In fact, I'm starting to believe he is partially responsible for it. How so? I have spies everywhere. From what I've been hearing, there is a rumor of an organization forming called Akatsuki, and it is composed of a number of S-Class Shinobi in the Bingo Book. Orochimaru is said to be a member, but I have to find proof before I tell Jiraiya. In any case, I'm telling you to be prepared. Konoha is going to need both you and Kakashi. He is already a powerful shinobi and with a Sharingan, he'll become stronger. His mastery of the eye is truly amazing, considering he isn't of Uchiha blood. So what you're saying is when and if the time comes, 
you want me to be on the front lines fighting the QB. To do that, I'll need to master Xenos Fusion Flame and Phoenix Claw. I've met Xenos once, but I've never summoned him. Not once. In order to even stand a chance against the Ninetales, I would have to master both, and even then, I'll probably still wouldn't stand much of a chance. For something like this, Heaven's Blade is needed, but the Minasho Clan is secretive, and it would be hard to get the leader to fight for us, since you pointed out. Not as hard as you think, but I don't think we need to get Ryuho involved in our matters. This is something we can deal with, and I thought you should be aware of. You might not think it, but I believe that you and Kakashi will be the strongest in your generation. I'll have the Edo Tsunade, Jiraiya, Saratopi, and other elite shinobi, but none have the potential that you have as the wielder. The Phoenix contract isn't given to everyone. It is among the legendary contracts. So you will play an important role in the events to come, I believe. I'll train even harder, Minuta Sensei. If I have to use my jutsu, then I will. Sender declared. I know you will do what is necessary, but I will do the same. I am the Okage after all. Come on, let's catch up to the group. The fourth Okage took off with Zenjiro in hot pursuit. Seven hours later, it didn't take Zenjiro long to catch up with the squad. It actually only took them a few minutes to catch up. Minota traveled them a quarter of the way then headed west. The group decided to set up camp for the night. Genma, who was leaning on a tree trunk with a senbo in his mouth, addressed Shikaku. Captain, are you sure we should camp here? We are in enemy territory, and there have been reports of shinobi in this area. That's true, but we are only stopping to get four hours of sleep. I think it would be best if we try to get back to the leaf as soon as possible, Shikaku stated. I'll stand guard, Sandra informed everyone. You guys get some sleep. The group did just that. After the time passed, the team headed out towards the castle. Hours of traveling finally led them to the location. Delivering the content of the box to the king, the leaf group turned down the offer to stay the day. They left as soon as they arrived that morning, hoping to be back in Konoha by nightfall. More traveling ensued for the group. Sendru did two S-Class missions prior. Both were hard, but this one was relatively simple. Too bad he spoke too soon. The group stopped as shurikens whizzed towards them, splitting off in different directions. Sendru, Kurnai, Asuma, Shizune, and Genma separated from Shikaku, who now had a cloud shinobi in front of him. Senjiro and his group were cut off by three shinobi. Standing in the middle was a slightly taller shinobi with icy blue eyes and shoulder-length black hair. The look in his eyes was a look that Senjiro would never forget. End of flashback. And that was the day that tied our face together, Aisu. Flashback. Leaf shinobi. We can use them for interrogation, the blue-eyed cloud shinobi suggested. Aisu, no matter what you do, it won't change the villagers' minds, the other Jonin suggested. I have to regain my honor. This is the only way. Capture them all or at least try. If they refuse, murder them. Aisu stated with no emotion. Shikaku went to move, but was cut off by the guy in front of him. Senju glanced at him and nodded as to tell him not to worry. Senju turned to Aisu and smirked. We will not be taken hostage. That only means that you'll have to kill us. But I will not let my friends die. So I guess that presents you with a problem. No, it presents you with one. Pointing his hand at Kurnai, a black dragon shot from his hand. Before contact could be made, a phoenix flew in the path of the dragon, saving Kurnai. Appearing in front of his girlfriend, he narrowed his eyes at Aisu, who was shocked. You tried to kill her. Biggest mistake of your life, buddy. Sandrew said with his fist clenched at his side. You're the wielder of the phoenix. I don't believe it. This has to be fate. You guys take care of the others. This kid is mine. Aisu informed the others. Without warning, the Cloud Shinobi attacked Team Shikaku. End of flashback. 100 yards away, Hayami watched Sendru. He looks like an angel, doesn't he, Sasuke? Yes, yes he does, Sasuke replied. Sendru smiled at Aisu. It won't be long now. It's almost over. Flashback. Team Shikaku engaged their group and for a while, the battle was at a standstill. Then slowly, the tide went to the cloud. One of the Cloud Shinobi injured Asuma, to the point where he couldn't move his leg that had been fractured. Shizune had been knocked unconscious by one of the Shinobi, who realized her importance on the team. Shikaku had his hands full with the Jonin, while Kurna and Genma continued to fight the other two, a battle they were both slowly losing. Senju wasn't faring too well in his battle. Aisu, who was trained in the Wicked Wind style, 
was using a silver katana, while Senju used a kunai to shield himself from the attacks. Slashing at Senju's face, the slug Sanin's son performed a backflip to dodge it. When he landed, he blocked Aisu's sword with a kunai in his hand. Sword pressed against kunai, the two glared at one another. Give it up, you can't win against me the way you are. Granted, you have done an amazing job avoiding my attacks, but you won't be able to do so for long, Aisu stated. I'm not giving up. That's not something Leaf Shinobi does. Pushing Aisu back, the two separated, creating distances between each other. Both of Aisu's teammates landed next to him and spoke. That boy, the one who can summon phoenixes, is the child of Tsunade. With him, Aisu, you can restore your honor. Aisu smiled. So, you're Tsunade's child. No wonder you're good. Sad, really. I wanted to kill you, but it seems that you're more valuable to me alive than dead. It seems that the gods finally decided to smile on me. Looking at his two teammates, kill the red-eyed girl and the boy with the senbo in his mouth. Once that's done, help soon see against the Nara. What about that boy and the medic? The shinobi asked. The medic will take. Leave the boy. He'll be our little messenger. I will capture Tsunade's son, Aisu informed. Senju didn't wait. He launched his assault at Aisu. With two kunai in hand, he swung his left hand at Aisu who blocked with the sword. Using his right foot to place a kick in Aisu's gut, he found that too was blocked by the Jonin from the Cloud Village. Senjuro was going all out with his attacks, until he felt a punch planted in his gut. It was followed by a swift kick that sent him flying into a tree, acting in an instant. Kurnai ran towards him and when Senjuro opened his eyes, he saw her falling to the ground. Standing behind her was a Jonin from Cloud with a kunai in his hand. He slashed her from behind, and was planning to finish the job by ramming the sword in her back. Senju glanced at Genma, who was on one knee. It wouldn't be long before they were all dead. Shizune was coming too, and Awesome was propped against a tree. Shikaku was the only one faring well against his opponent. Senju had no choice. If he didn't act, everyone would die. Aisu's words reached the Phoenix Wielder's ears. It's over. It ends here. Senju smiled. Either way, it does end here. Sorry, Mom. It can't be helped. Forming the necessary seals and finishing with the tiger seal, Senju yelled out, Ha! All four of the Cloud Shinobi found that they couldn't move. Icy tried to move, but couldn't no matter what he did. What's going on? What jutsu is this? I call it Angel of Death. You can't escape it. It's the ultimate technique. All of you will die here. To ensure their safety, you all will die. Senju informed Icy of what was to come. The kanji of death started to slowly form on the chest of each shinobi. Shizune, Kurnai, and Genma were on the ground behind him. He turned his head and looked at Shizune. Shizune, tell mom that I'm sorry. I had to do this. Asuma, take care of Kurnai for me. Kurnai, I want you to know that I'm doing this for you. Remember that I swore to protect you. Well, that's what I'm going to do. Goodbye, everyone. Senju disappeared from sight and was in the air. Aisu looked up to see the boy in front of him high up, and he was glowing white. The light was shining so bright, it looked like an angel was coming down from the heavens. Senju, who had his eyes closed throughout the whole process, opened them suddenly. He then shouted, Angel of Death! Everything in the immediate area was covered by a blinding white light. The light died down, and it took everyone a while to see clearly. Kurnai. Despite the pain in her legs and back stood up. Senju! 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 Asuma slowly picked himself up, and struggling walked to her and put a hand at her shoulder. Kurenai. He's gone. He he's not gone, it's, it's just one of his sick jokes. He'll come out any minute, you you'll see, you'll see. She fell to the ground and broke down crying. Shizune was crying hysterically. Genma went to comfort her. Shikaku walked back to the group. His fight was over. The ninja he was fighting faded with the light. He looked at his group and saw Senju missing. Genma, who was holding a crying Shizune in his arms, looked at Shikaku and shook his head. Shikaku looked at the ground when a gleam in the grass caught his eye. He walked to the spot to find the first Hokage's necklace. He put it in his pocket. He was not looking forward to telling Tsunade that her son was dead. He didn't tell the team to come on. He let him stay there and mourn the loss of a friend and a teammate. End of flashback. Senju was now ready to end it, but something he didn't expect to happen occurred. He started to glow orange. 
Then, his transformation faded away in embers. He was back in his normal form. My power. What happened? Xenos. The second he lost focus, the binding technique that was used in conjunction with this jutsu was dispelled allowing Aisu the window to attack Senzuru. A sharp kick sent him hurling to the ground. Everyone was surprised at what just occurred, even Senzuru himself. Shit, I let the fitting of the transformation distract me. If I would have kept my focus, I could have ended this. Shit, the window is closed. Aisu started to walk towards Senzuru, but stopped midway when he saw an unusual glow from the corner of his eye. Turning to the direction of the glow, he was shocked to see it coming from Naruto's corpse. Hayami and Sasuke were both looking at Naruto, trying to understand what was happening. Big Brother Naruto is glowing. What's going on, Sasuke? I don't know. Sasuke activated his Sharingan. What is this chakra? Neji, who was within the seal, looked at Naruto with his Byakugan. His chakra? Hinata, who was also looking at her two cent. It's doing something I've never seen before. Shinji was watching Naruto closely. I can't believe it. Is this really the bearer of the light? Everyone watched Naruto as his body was giving off a white glow. Yumi smiled. He's coming back. Limbo. Naruto smiled at Heaven's Blade. And called forth the man's name. K.A. Tengali. Beyond Heaven's Light. Hearing his name come out of Naruto's mouth caused a smile to develop. When this happened, both his and Naruto's eyes started to glow. The color of his golden locks turned a ghostly white, and his ocean-colored eye began to glow. Golden chakra engulfed his frame, shining the brightest among the other wielders. Naruto had achieved what he had come there to achieve. He had achieved the final form. He had become the bearer of the light. Ryuho and the others were happy to see Naruto achieve this form. Naruto looked at his hands to see the golden glow. He didn't even look up when a sword was aimed at his head. Instead, he caught the blade with his right hand while still looking at his left. This, this is unreal. I can't believe that this technique would allow me to use your power as my own. The wielder who had attacked Naruto jumped back and sheathed the sword, looking at Ryuho. What is he talking about? Doesn't he know? K.A. landed in front of Naruto, while Minato, Kushina, Kiori, Sarutobi, and everyone else gathered around him touching Naruto's shoulder, causing him to look up at K.A. Understand this for what it is. The power that you feel is not mine. It's all you. Sarutobi, Minato, Kushina, and Kaori didn't expect that and judging by the look in Naruto's face, neither did he. How can this be? This can't be my power, it's unreal. Let me inform you about something, Naruto. What I do is not give power. I unlock the power within. I guess you can say I'm like the key that opens the door of potential, setting free a person's potential level and making it reality. Naruto, what you are feeling now is your potential, a level that you could possibly reach someday without the sword. That is what Bearer of the Light does, unlocks a person's maximum potential. Potential, Naruto, is something that can vary. You see your potential today may not be the same as tomorrow as you grow in strength, so does your potential. You are in fact the strongest wielder I have ever seen. Whether you're the best still remains to be seen, K.A. informed. Anshin stepped forward and extended his hand for Naruto to shake. Congrats, kid. You've earned it. I honestly didn't think you'd have lasted that long against us. But you are the bearer now. It is up to you to keep balance. Naruto Uzumaki, eh? I'm sure I'll hear the name when new souls enter heaven. Kaori stepped up to Naruto. Naruto, protect your sister, and tell her that we love her. Ryuho placed a hand on his shoulder. Don't only protect her, Naruto. Protect those who need to be protected. Sarutobi was the next to speak. Who would have thought that the snot-nosed kid who bumped heads with me has one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful tool in the world? You never cease to amaze me, Naruto. Konoha needs you. Go save the village. Naruto's mother spoke. I wish we had more time together, Naruto. I see that you're as confident as your father, and have a heart as big as mine. Kaori has told me about the son I never got a chance to know. Naruto, I want you to know that what we did uh, was what we- Naruto cut her off. I know. I don't hate you. When I was younger, 
I wanted a family and wondered why I didn't have one. Was it because I was a monster that my parents left or was it another reason? I realized you guys didn't leave. You died to protect me. You loved me enough to do that. Naruto turned to Minato. You steal the nine tails in me, and I wonder why the fourth Hokage would do that. I know it was to protect the village, but I didn't understand why until I discovered you were my father. If I had a son, I would have done the same thing, because I wouldn't trust anyone else with that power. You trusted me to use the power that tried to destroy the village to protect it. It wasn't meant to be, but I understand why it was done. I wanted to be Okage. I admired you, and wanted to be like you, but our paths lie on different roads. And I will forge my own legend. Of course you will. You're my son. Now show the world what I saw when you first entered this world. Show the world how great Naruto Uzumaki. Correction. The Golden Fox is. I don't know who this Aisu guy is, but stop him. Good luck, son. K.A. spoke any Naruto's attention. Well, we have to move now. Senju lost his power, and Aisu is eyeing us. The Uchiha will protect you, but both he and Hayami will die if Aisu attacks. He's heading towards us. Grab me, and we will protect everyone. Naruto grabbed his hand, and the golden light engulfed him. Stadium. I see Lush and Naruto. I don't know what's going on, but it doesn't look good. Whatever it is, I have to stop it. Sasuke appeared in front of Naruto and Hayami and summoned Kusanagi, preparing to shield Hayami and Naruto from Aisu's swing. He never had a chance to. Tsunade, Senju, Jiraiya, and everyone else's eyes expanded at what just occurred. Yumi smiled. Welcome back, Naruto. Konohamaru's mouth was hanging open. Whoa, bro is golden. A few miles from Konoha. While heading back to Cloud, one of the Cloud Jonin said with a hint of fear in his voice, What was that chakra? That chakra? I've never felt the chakra force from this far before. Not even yours reaches this far, Lord Cohen. Cohen smiled. Welcome back, Naruto Uzumaki. Raido looked at Cohen, then back at his father's location. Father, you have to win and come home. Konoha. Aisu couldn't believe what he was seeing. Naruto, who was dead minutes ago, was standing between him and the Uchiha. Heaven's blade rested against the black dragon's fang, preventing it from going any further. The golden aura radiated from his body. His head was now decorated with white locks. He looked up at Aisu with the glowing blue eyes. There was only one thing in his eyes, and that one thing was resolve. He's changed. He has become something else. He's achieved another level. I have to stop him soon, was what Aisu thought. Naruto, however, only thought one thing. Protect everyone. I will protect everyone. As the bearer of light, he had the power to do just that.